Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So it's day two of Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Spoiler Season Extravaganza Thingy. Yeah. Anyways, that doesn't get easier to say the more I say it. Regardless, we've seen a lot of really exciting cards like Circle of Dreams Druid, which just might be a brand new Gaia's Cradle as a creature. We also saw Treasure Chest, a card that says roll a d20 and then some shenanigans can occur. And yes, this is the very first legal black border card that says roll a d20. We've also seen Xanathar Guild Kingpin, who essentially is a, well, send triplets light. Let's just say that. So we've seen a ton of exciting cards so far this spoiler season and things have continued on day two with Wish. Now this is a really cool and unique card, but there's just one small problem. It doesn't work in Commander. At all. Now it's not banned, but what it does basically is. So what is this card and what does it do and why is what it does not legal in Commander? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So, Wish is a sorcery that costs two in a red that says you may play a card you own from outside the game this turn. That's a really exciting effect. You go and get a card that you need from your sideboard, and then you can cast it, but just on this turn. So yeah, in Standard, Modern, Legacy, pretty much in every format, this card works because, you know, you've got a sideboard. The only problem is, with Commander, well, you, you don't. Now, why is that? The rule that addresses this on the Rules Committee's website is Rule 11. Parts of abilities which bring other cards you own from outside the game into the game, such as Living Wish, Spawn Sile of Ulamog, Khan the Grid Creator, do not function in Commander. <clears throat> now that rule is specifically worded that way for a lot of reasons, but we'll get to that here in a bit. Regardless, because of that rule, this card is legal in Commander, but it does absolutely nothing. Uh, okay, maybe it adds to your storm count, I guess, and that's basically it. You can trigger Magecraft too, sure. I mean, because of that rule, effectively 10 or so cards are actually banned, even though they're not stated as officially banned. You can put Wish in any deck that you want that has red, but it is a do-nothing card. Literally, Hill Giant would be more effective. Now, I'm not here to convince you that Commander should have a sideboard like every other format. I'm just here to illustrate the flaws in the current pick-and-choose approach. And here in a little while, I'll talk about exactly what I mean by that. Okay, so maybe I'm here to convince you about the sideboard thing just a bit. Anyways, let's jump in and talk about some other cards like Wish that don't function in Commander, but aren't banned in Commander. So first up, other cards that don't work in Commander, but aren't banned like Wish are, well, the Wishes. Living Wish is one of five wishes from a cycle of one of each color. Living Wish is a sorcery for one in a green. It says you may choose a creature or land card you own from outside the game. Reveal that card and put into your hand. Exile Living Wish. For the most part, each card in the cycle gets a different kind of card. And there's kind of a sixth card of the cycle, which is Glittering Wish. Glittering Wish is a sorcery for green, white, and it says you may reveal a multicolored card you own from outside the game and put into your hand. Exile Glittering Wish. So, from your sideboard, you can get whatever multicolored card you need for the situation that you're in. And you might recognize this one as it was reprinted recently in Time Spiral Remastered. But one that came out in a more recent set was Coax from the Blind Eternities. This one came out in Eldritch Moon and it says you may choose an Eldrazi card you own from outside the game or an Exile, reveal that card and put into your hand. So this one somewhat works in Commander, but not really. Obviously that first part doesn't work, so you can't go get your Ulamog from your sideboard and just get it into your hand. But if someone path to exiled your Pawn of Ulamog and it got exiled, then yeah, you can get it back with this. 
So yeah, like the other wishes, this card's not going to see any play in Commander, because it basically just doesn't function. And speaking of a non-functioning Eldrazi card, well, at least in a way, there's Spawn Sire of Ulamog. It's a 7-11 Eldrazi with an Eyelid 1 that costs 10. By paying 4, you put 2-0-1 Kellis Eldrazi spawn creature tokens onto the battlefield, they have sacrificed this creature, add colors to your mana pool. But the reason this one's on this episode is that it says, pay 20, cast any number of Eldrazi cards you own from outside the game without paying their mana cost. Now, if you can get to 20 mana, that's a really, really cool effect, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. Again, parts of abilities which bring other cards you own from outside the game into the game do not function in Commander. So, no fun times like that with Spawn Sire of Ulamog though it does still see some play. And so does Karn the Great Creator. It's a Planeswalker that costs 4 and has 5 starting loyalty and says activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. Its plus 1 is until your next turn up to 1 target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its converted mana cost. But it's minus 2, which is why it's on this episode, says you may choose an artifact card you own from outside the game or an exile, reveal that card and put it in your hand. So again, like Coax from the Blind Eternities, this somewhat works, but not really. Again, you can't get something from outside the game, and chances are you don't have an artifact in exile. Or how about Mastermind's Acquisition, which is a sorcery for two black black, and it says choose one. Search your library for a card, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library, or choose a card you own from outside the game and put it in your hand. Again, you essentially don't even have a choice with this one, though it does say choose one, you've got to pick that first option. Because if you pick that second option, nothing happens. So it's just essentially a rare diabolic tutor. That's basically it. But we even have some more recent cards that have interacted with outside the game with Vivian Arcbow Ranger, Bay of Wishes, and the Raven's Warning. Vivian does it with her minus 5, which says you may choose a creature card you own from outside the game, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Or basically, yeah, this Planeswalker just doesn't even have an ultimate in Commander because you can't do that. And then with Bay of Wishes, the Granted Adventure on it says you may choose a non-creature card you own from outside the game, reveal it, and put it in your hand. So, no going on adventures for Fey of Wishes, or at least, I mean, you can still go on the adventure, but you're not getting anything out of it. And then the Raven's Warning is a saga, and its first lore counter is create a 1-1 one, one blue bird creature token with flying, you gain 2 life. Its second lore counter is, whenever one or more creatures you control with flying deal combat damage to a player this turn, look at that player's hand and draw a card. And then the last lore counter says, you may put a card you own from outside the game on top of your library. Or essentially, in Commander, that third lore counter means, do nothing. You just lose your saga, you got those first two things, but yeah, that third one, not getting anything out of it. So kind of an anticlimactic buildup there. It seems like more and more recently, we're getting more and more cards that interact with outside the game, with obviously Wish being our newest example. I find all of this very problematic for quite a few reasons. One reason is that this makes something incredibly confusing for new players. The cards aren't banned, but they don't work. So can you really fault a new player that assumes that there is a sideboard that you have access to when you're playing these cards? Or are you just supposed to know that only one half of Mastermind's acquisition or just part of Sponsire Bulamog works? I mean, something like Karn the Great Creator sees a decent amount of play and part of it doesn't work, so that can be pretty confusing for players when they see it on the field. And again, a new player coming into the game might see Wish in this new set, get really excited about it and put it in their brand new first commander deck and then they're told that this card doesn't work and they should just get rid of their sideboard entirely as well. Reading the card explains the card. Unless you're playing Commander and you're talking about outside the game. Implementing a sideboard in Commander is not difficult. All you have to say is 15 cards that follow the exact same deck restrictions. That's it. So if you've got a mono green Commander, you only can use green cards in your sideboard and you cannot have duplicates. It's that simple. The small group in charge does not want this to happen though, and they just pick and choose what they do want to happen when new things come out. So let's jump into some examples of that from recent memory. First up, let's talk about Companions which came out in Ikoria. You might remember Companions as that one thing that broke a lot of other formats. Anyways, companions like Lurus the Dream Den, Obosh the Prey Piercer, and Zerda the Dawn Awaker each have a companion requirement. For example, Lurus the Dream Den says, each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. If this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. So in other formats that have a sideboard, this card starts off in your sideboard, and as long as your deck just has permanent cards in your starting deck with converted mana cost two or less, you can cast it once from outside the game. Now, Commander doesn't have a sideboard, so initial thought is, well, wishes don't work in Commander, so I wouldn't think that these would either. But again, because of the pick-and-choose nature when it comes to outside-of-the-game rules, they do. 
In deck construction rules, rule number three is a commander deck must contain exactly 100 cards, including the commander. If you're playing a companion, it must adhere to color identity and singleton rules. While it's not part of the deck, it's effectively a 101st card. So let's just break this down really quick. Companions are not a part of your deck. They are a 101st card, but there's no outside the game for other cards, but there is for, for these. And also we're just gonna change the 100 card rule that we've had forever, specifically for this, instead of, you know, just having a sideboard, which these would be in. Because again, rule 11 is very specifically worded, parts of abilities which bring other cards you want from outside the game into the game do not function in Commander. These cards bring themselves. So, because again of that very specific wording, they work and wishes don't. But for an even more recent example of the pick and choose approach, let's talk about learn and lesson from Strixhaven. For example, Pop Quiz is an instant that costs two in a blue and it says draw a card and it also says learn. Learn means you may reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game and put it in your hand or discard a card to draw a card. Now, even though it was revealed that the companion mechanic would work in Commander, even though it dealt with outside the game, the lesson mechanic doesn't. So although you can include lessons like Environmental Sciences, Containment Breach, and Confront the Past in your deck, you can't include it in a sideboard or outside the game. You can't go grab them when you actually learn. So instead, learn in Commander essentially means you may not reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game and put into your hand. You just may discard a card to draw a card. Basically, in other words, learn equals rummage now. So again, why weren't rules changed for this, but they were changed for the companion mechanic where they kind of, you know, shoehorned in a, a weird rule where you can now have like a 101st card that's like outside the game, but not really? You'd have to ask the rules committee. Now, obviously the most recent mechanic that came up in this pick and choose approach is the dungeon mechanic from this current set. Or should I say this current set that is being spoiled, Dungeons and Dragons Adventures of the Forgotten Realms. Anyways, if you want to fully understand what dungeons are and how exactly they work, make sure you check this episode out. I'm not going to go into full detail on this episode, I'm just going to give you the gist. Regardless, we can see the venture mechanic mentioned on Nadar's Selfless Paladin. This is a new commander that I highlighted on a recent episode, and it's actually a pretty exciting mono-white commander, but regardless, it's a 3-3 Dragon Knight with Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, venture into the dungeon. So you either enter the first room or advance to the next room and other creatures you control get plus plus one as long as you've completed a dungeon. Now there are three dungeons to pick from, but for this episode's purposes, I'm just gonna highlight one to make it a little simpler. So when you venture into the dungeon, you pick one of the three dungeons, and let's say we pick Lost Mine of Phandelver. Now from Wizards website, dungeons don't go in your deck, rather they start outside the game and end up in the command zone for a while. Dungeons don't take up sideboard slots, you always have access to all three dungeons, and you'll never need more than one of the same one. Basically, when you venture into the dungeon, you go get one from outside the game, and you put it into your command zone. It's not going into play, and again in other formats, it's not even taking up a sideboard slot. When you venture into and through the dungeon, you get room ability triggers depending on what room you're in. When the last room ability resolves, the dungeon is removed from the game, and the dungeon is considered completed. Now, personally, when I first saw Venture Into the Dungeon, I was worried that this mechanic would not be legal in Commander. In fact, whenever any new mechanic comes out that deals with outside the game, it's kind of just a waiting approach to see what the rules committee is going to say on it. You might get excited about a new mechanic like Learn and find out that lessons don't work in Commander like they do in other formats. Just as a new Commander player who saw Wish revealed today is going to be really excited, and then they're going to find out that this card does not function in Commander. Or at least I hope they do find out before they actually go buy the card and go buy all the cards for their sideboard that doesn't work in Commander. Because again of the current pick and choose approach. Adding in an optional sideboard to Commander makes things a lot less confusing. Players can then understand how new cards and mechanics are going to function without having to look to the rules committee to understand, okay, this deals with outside the game, so how does this work now? Seemingly, more and more new cards and mechanics are dealing with outside the game. So instead of this confusing pick-and-choose approach and make things work whenever we want them to, couldn't a sideboard just solve all that? And no, an optional sideboard is not going to break Commander. You might disagree with me on that and all of this, and that's okay. In fact, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your arguments against or for a sideboard in Commander. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.